Hi everyone, this is Peter Harris from CommercialPropertyAdvisors.com and co-author of this book, Commercial Real Estate Investing for Dummies, as well as coach and mentor to many commercial investors all across America. The subject and title of today's video is called The Master Lease Agreement for Commercial Real Estate. So let's get started. The master lease agreement is probably my one of my most favorite ways to buy commercial real estate. Especially if you have no experience, you have no credit, you have a very small down payment, but most of all, you don't want to deal with banks. And it works with apartments, with office buildings, with, with uh, uh, strip centers, with mobile home parks, and with sub storage. So pretty much anything commercial where there's income involved, the master lease agreement will most likely work. One of the most famous uh, master lease deals you will ever come across of is New York's Empire State Building. Now, that building, that particular building, has a current master lease that is over 100 years old. And here's how it happened. The original owner sold it to uh, Prudential uh, Insurance Company. A person came along in 1961 and offered Prudential a 114-year master lease agreement where they would pay uh, Prudential $2 million per year. Back then, that was a lot of money, so Prudential signed off on it and they went into agreement with this new investor. Fast forward till today, the uh, payments are still $2 million, but the income is $6 million. So do the math. $6 million in income every year with $2 million in payments, that's a $4 million profit per year. So that is still ongoing today. All right, so that's probably the most famous master lease agreement deal you probably are ever going to hear of. All right, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Peter, I can't uh, myself put a, uh, uh, a master lease on a building of that size, and you're probably right. But what's stopping you from using the master lease on your first 12-unit apartment building, or a small strip center, or even a mobile home park? Or how about my protege Joe, who used a master lease to secure his first deal, which was a 168-unit apartment deal? And I'll get to that shortly. So here's how the master lease agreement works. You would uh, buy the property from the owner and with a small or zero down payment. And at closing, what you would get is what we call equitable title. Not legal title, but equitable title which entitles you to all the cash flow, all the tax benefits. You have to take care of the day-to-day -day operations of the property and pay all the bills. And the best part is when you sell the property, you get all the profits at the set price. So basically when you set the terms, well basically the terms of the master lease are, are set in stone. So whatever value you can increase with the, on the property with, uh, during the master lease is yours to keep. For example, if you raise the rents and raise the cash flow, that's yours. If you increase the property value by doing improvements and increase the value and sell the property, all the profits are yours. What the seller gets is a monthly lease payment from you. And even that's negotiable. So the master lease agreement is ideal for the individual investor who has uh, maybe perhaps no experience, uh, trouble credit, very small down payment and does not want to deal with banks. It's ideal for that person. All right, so let me go with you, uh, my protege's uh, deal. His name is Joe. Joe found a 168 unit apartment building for sale. And the owner of the property bought the property for his two sons and they were in their mid 20s. And, and most mid 20 year olds do not, um, do, are not interested and becoming property owners, and they surely weren't. So the property went into disrepair and it had high uh, vacancy. So when Joe went to do his research on the property, he found two problems. The first problem was that the property was in disrepair, meaning that you could not put a new loan on the property. A lender just wasn't willing to loan on the property. Secondly, uh, he couldn't put a loan on the property anyway because there was a large prepay penalty, about $800,000. Uh, penalty if the seller uh, paid off the loan early, play, paid off the loan early. So there was two big obstacles there. However, the seller still wanted to sell the property, and he needed money to 
uh, he, need, he need to sell the property so he can get money for his next development deal. So here are two things you must do in order to do your first master lease commercial deal. Number one is get the seller motivation. That's what you have to do. And number two is you, is you construct the offer and the agreement around the seller motivation. Okay? Let me repeat that. Get the seller motivation and you structure the deal and the terms around the seller motivation. Those are two most important things you have to do. All right. So what Joe did, to make a long story short, was Joe uh, uh, st structured a four-year master lease agreement deal where he brought in investors, he paid them an 8% return, and at the end of four years, he's going to sell their property and split their profits 50-50 with the seller, I mean, with, the, uh, with his investors. And this ended up being a win-win for everyone. The seller was able to get his down payment money for uh, his new development deal. He was able to get out of a problem property, and Joe was able to get his first deal done, as well as leave his first time, his, uh, his full-time job. But in my opinion, the best thing, the best part about Joe's deal was that every year, because uh, Joe made a payment to the seller, at least payment to the seller every month, the seller then in turn paid the mortgage. All right? So every time he paid the mortgage, the principal uh, balance of the mortgage dropped uh, by $200,000 per year. Joe's deals for four years. So 200,000 times four years is $800,000. So Joe created $800,000 in equity on this deal uh, at the end of four years. So all because of one deal. Uh, that's the power of the master lease. All right, now in simple terms, here's what happens, okay? The, the seller gets an easy sell of the property, all right? A master lease deal can close in seven days. All right. The seller also gets lease payments. Every month you have to pay the seller a lease payment that covers the mortgage at least. The seller also gets freedom. He gets freedom from involvement in the day-to-day -day operations of the property. And probably the most important thing, the seller gets rescued from any personal issues or financial, financial issues of the property because you take them over. All right. The buyer, that's you, you get to purchase a commercial property with no banks, with no experience, with no credit, and possibly a very little amount of money out of your own pocket. The buyer also gets less risk. And you want to know why it's less risk? It's because the, the loan is still in the seller's name. The buyer also gets cash flow. Any money made after the lease payment is yours to keep. That's your cash flow. So as you increase the rents and make more money, uh, and, and become a better property owner, increase the cash flow, that's yours to keep. Next is the buyer gets an option to buy after uh, a few years. In Joe's case, it was four years. And probably the most important thing, the buyer gets all profits. Let me explain this to you. The, the terms and the price on the master lease are set for those, let's say, four years, for example, in Joe's case. All right. So if, you're, if your price is set at a million dollars and you purchase a property with a master lease and you go in and do improvements uh, after, for in four years and increase the property value by two, by two million dollars, so you bought in a million, now you increase the value to three million, that two million dollar profit is 100% yours. Okay, so that's the power of the master lease agreement. All right, I'm going to leave you with three nuggets on, on you doing a successful commercial master lease deal. The first nugget is what I mentioned before, get the seller motivation and structure the deal around his motivation. That's number one. Number two is I want you to unwind your mind of what a typical deal looks like. All right? There is no uh, uh, standard commercial master lease deal. They're all different. However, there is one thing that holds it all together. There is one thing I consider the glue of any master lease deal, and that is the actual master lease agreement document. The one that we, our company uses is rock solid, attorney approved. What type of seller or property is ideal for the master lease agreement? And I'm going to go with you six signs, and, and I'm sure that 
one of these signs will probably match up with the property that you're currently looking at. All right, you'll see what I mean. All right, now I want you to look for the seller that is tired and burnt out. It's number one. There are literally tens of thousands of sellers that fit this scenario today. And you can find them. They're tired, they're burnt out, they're broke, they bought a bad property, and uh, they're just kind of just burnt out of, of the business. And these are probably the most motivated sellers that you're going to find. And since you are the problem solver, and the tool that you're going to use is the master lease, you're going to come along and you're going to buy the property from them, from this tired and burnt out seller. You're going to fix up the property, you're going to stabilize it, you're going to cash flow it, you're going to regain the equity over time, and you're going to sell out and cash out big time. That's your goal here, all right? And um, also, uh, a tired and burnt out owner, he probably hasn't operated the property uh, optimally, all right? So it's probably has some issues with it. Therefore, a loan can't probably go into property. Therefore, you probably can't sell it for what you want to sell it for. And that's where you come along, and that's why we use the master lease agreement. All right, the second type of seller I want you to look for is a seller that lives out of state. All right, meaning he bought the property in one state, but he lives in another. And what I like about these sellers is they are not emotionally tied to their properties. So once they start experiencing problems, um, they're more apt to sell than a, than a, a property owner who lives uh, you know, close to his, his uh, commercial property. And what I want you to do to, to realize is, is back in the day when real estate was, was booming, a lot of people, because properties in their own area have the prices skyrocketed, they went outside of their area and they bought these properties. On paper, look great. But in actuality, what most of the times that happened was they hired bad property managers. And their property managers are ruining their properties. And they want to get rid of them. And the reason why they're so motivated is, again, they're not emotionally tied to their property. They don't see it every day. All they do is think about what a problem property they bought. And you're going to come along, again, with the master lease agreement and buy this property from them. You're going to inject some capital into it, some fix up into it. You're going to stabilize it, cash flow it. In years down the road, you're going to cash out big. All right. Next is, let's look for the seller and the, and the property type that there's uh, the seller is sick or has certain personal circumstances going on. And there are actually more of these than you actually imagine. And the thing with these um, sellers is, that, well, let me just tell you this. Um, this is what happens every day in life. You have sickness, you have divorce, you have people getting new jobs, you have people moving overseas, you have partnership breakups, you have um, uh, uh, family trust, uh, where it's situations that owns properties and the person has passed away and now it's time to sell the property. Those are the categories you're going to find this under, and it happens more often than you think. And these guys want a quick sale. So they want to get out. And most likely, since the person has had their attention has not been on their property because of the situation, the property is not in ideal shape, meaning they probably couldn't sell it and get the highest price. So you're going to come along. You're going to offer an aggressive price. You're going to remove this situation from their life and be the problem solver that way. So the uh, master lease agreement is ideal in this situation. Okay, next is I want you to find a seller who wants to avoid capital gains tax. And the, the, the master lease is ideal for this scenario. It really is. Because remember, you're not buying their property from him. You're not putting a new loan on their property. You are actually leasing it from him. So it's not really a sale. And um, so he can, uh, he can avoid or defer his capital gains tax after you take it over. Here's another benefit to, uh, to number four, avoiding capital gains tax, is that you can actually uh, help the seller out by, uh, by deferring his capital gains tax by buying his property incrementally. Here's what I mean by that. If you were to buy his property with a master lease, 
he can defer his capital gains tax over, let's say, three years. Year one, he could sell the property to you outright. He could sell one-third of the property to you outright. Year two, he could sell the next third of the property to you outright. In year three, the, uh, the third part of the third, he could sell to you outright. So three years, he has spread out his capital gains tax. So the beauty of the master lease agreement is in its flexibility. Okay, next the type of the seller I want you to look for is a seller that's willing to, uh, uh, that has a large prepay penalty on his loan. Uh, most commercial loans uh, today that are on commercial properties uh, go out for maybe, let's say it goes out for five to seven years. Well, the first five years, there is a penalty for selling a property or putting new loan in a property uh, before it matures. And sometimes that penalty can be up to 5% of the loan balance. That's a lot of money. So let's say the seller needs to sell his property. Let's say he's experiencing one of these, um, these top threes, but he has a large prepay penalty. What does he do? He needs to sell. But what does he do? He can't sell because he, there's a large penalty to pay. What he does is he, you buy it with a master lease agreement. Because remember, with a master lease, there is no new loan or property. You pretty much take over the loan and you continue making the payments as if uh, it is a new loan. All right, so uh, this is a, so the master lease agreement is ideal for a property where a seller has a large prepay uh, penalty. All right, and the last seller or the property type I want you to look for is a seller that has property management problems. And uh, you know that uh, the key to making money with a commercial property is to have really, really good uh, property management. And if you don't, you're going to suffer. Unfortunately, a lot of people, a lot of investors, don't know how to manage the manager. And if you don't have, know how to do that, you're going to suffer. Unfortunately, a lot of people uh, are like that. The other thing is, let's face it, there are a lot of good property managers out there. So there are a ton, I say a ton of sellers that have bad property management and uh, they have property management problems and they want to get out. They try three, two or three property managers and still no results. They figure this game is not for me and they want out. So what I want you to look for here are what we call hair on the property. And what I mean by hair on the property are problems with the property. Two problems, actually. I want you to look for physical problems, and I want you to look for financial problems. All right. The physical problems could be, um, for example, it could be uh, properties, let's say an apartment building, an apartment building that has over 20% vacancy. There, that's a physical problem. That's a physical occupancy problem. A property that has overgrown landscaping is a physical problem. A property that has boarded up windows on one side of the, of the property uh, is a physical problem. Those are our, those, all of those are, are telltale signs that this, this owner is having some management issues and he needs a solution. He needs you. All right, the next uh, set of problems I want you to look for um, that go under property management problems are financial problems. Now, the first financial problem is to look for a property that has vacancies that are over 90 days old, all right? So if, if for an apartment building they have a vacancy that's over 90 days old, that tells you that they do not have the resources or the funds or the finances to fix their property up and get it leased up or rented out, okay? The next financial problem are if the seller is ha, uh, has missed mortgage payments or is delinquent on his property taxes. That is a sure sign of distress right there. And um, uh, also, if the property is in foreclosure or it has a notice of default on it, and you can actually search for those. So if you see those two things, most likely uh, the owner is in trouble and he needs you. He needs you to come with a mass release and save him. Okay, and lastly, um, you're going to see this uh, quite a bit with properties online. And when you see a property that had a, a major price reduction, that tells you that he is motivated, he's ready to move, 
He wants a solution. He has to sell the property. I want you to look for that as well. All right. So these six signs are something I know that you can find on a commercial property. And when you find them, remember what I taught you in the first, uh, in part one in the video, that the key to doing a master lease deal, a successful master lease deal, is first get the seller motivation, and secondly, uh, use that seller motivation to structure a deal uh, for a, a, a master lease deal. Okay, so number one, get the seller motivation. Number two, structure the deal around the seller motivation. Right now, you have six ways of finding seller motivation. Okay? Okay, so the last thing I want to share with you today is uh, some of you are wondering, Peter, why are we focusing on problem properties, other people's uh, problems on their properties? Well, let me tell you this. Um, nearly all successful commercial real estate investors uh, that I know, let me say this, all real estate investors should be good at solving problems, other people's problems. And that's what I want for you today, is to learn how to solve other people's problems. There's a book, uh, one of my favorite books, its author is T. Harv Eker. The name of the book is called The Secrets of the Millionaire, Millionaire Mind. And he defines an entrepreneur as a person who solves other person's problems for profit, right? That's what I want you to do. And you see, the master lease agreement isn't always about making money, all right? It's about helping people, all right? And the more people you help, the more successful you become, and the more money you make. So that's how it works, all right? The more people you help, the more success you have, and the more money you make. And now you have the tool to do all three. All right, so if you want more videos uh, like this, uh, go, please go to our website, uh, commercialpropertyadvisors.com, or simply subscribe to this YouTube channel. Okay, everyone, so that ends part two of the master lease agreement for commercial real estate. I'll see you on the next video.